tuning GNS3 to avoid a very disastrous 100% CPU utilization. That's what this micro nugget's all about. Let's jump in. If you and I went to a sporting event, pick your favorite sporting event, and the teams were just giving 100% of everything they had into the game, it would be fantastic. It'd be fantastic to watch and to be a part of it, and there'd be a lot of energy as a result. So 100% in that sense is a good thing. But on a PC, an end user device, like a Windows box or Linux or Macintosh, if that CPU is giving 100% on the PC, that is not so pretty. Why is that? It's because there's very likely some processes that are starving for CPU. There just isn't enough CPU to go around and the box is gonna suffer. Now, if you've played with GNS3, it's very, very likely that you've seen the problem of 100% CPU utilization. It usually goes something like this. We install GNS3, we install a couple of routers, we turn them all on at the same time, and the CPU just pegs. And then everything is so slow that nothing is usable, let alone the other applications on the computer. Well, what if we could get that down to a manageable level? That's what this micro nugget is all about, how to train GNS3 to allocate processor accordingly so that the routers get the CPU they need and the rest of the box can be happy as well. We're gonna do that right now with something called the idle PC. Let's take a look at a live GNS3 environment. Here I'm running the latest version of GNS3 and I've got five iOS routers and unfortunately my CPU utilization right here, this is live, it's at 64%. Now on this category of machine that I happen to be using, 64% is an awful lot. And I thought to myself, I bet you with adding a few more routers, I could tip this at 100. But at the same time, I wanted to be able to record so that I could share this with you. So let's just imagine that 64% just for GNS3 is not acceptable. And we want to get that down. How do we do that? Our first thing that we'd want to do is use this big button right here called stop. We're going to stop the madness and get my CPU down to a measurable, agreeable level. So now it's going down to 3%, three, 5%, three and that's with the recording software that's going on. Now, to tune this, here's how you do it. You take one, I repeat, one router, and you bring just that one up. Right click, click on start, let all the others stay off, and you're gonna give R1, in this example, just a few moments to go ahead and boot up. Doesn't even matter what version of iOS you're running. It could be 12.4, could be 15, whatever version you're currently working with. And let me go ahead and double click to bring up the console prompt to that device. So here's R1, and you'll notice he's pretty much were booted, and we have CPU utilization around 15%, which is still, you know, really high just for a single router. Now on R1, what I'd have you do first off is I'd have you go into line console zero. And let's go ahead and tell it that there's no timeout on the console. Just like that. The Routers, if there's ever a time when they're waiting for somebody to press enter, for example, a console session times out and it's waiting to press enter to get a new session, that really eats the life out of GNS3 as well. So doing that will prevent a timeout, which will prevent it waiting for somebody to press enter to get back in. Now we've done that, I'm gonna save this file as well. And I've got one router up and running, we're about 15%. Let's go ahead and set the idle PC. Now to do that, you right click and simply go to idle PC pretty straightforward. Our CPU utilization may go up a little higher as it tries to figure out what is the sweet spot. These routers do not need all the CPU that they're asking for. So by selecting an idle PC, we use a drop down. This little asterisk right here is representing the options for the idle PC that might be a, might be a good choice. Now here it says uh, my number four is my only one. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, click OK. It says it's applied. And now let's take a look at my CPU utilization. Now it's dropping down to a more manageable level. It's around 4 or 5%. Again, that's with the recording software going on. If we go back to this guy and go do it again, idle PC is going to say, you already have an idle PC. Are you sure you want to do it again? I'm going to say, yes, I do, because I want to show you a point. One single idle PC is not the perfect idle PC. There's usually multiple options. And what Joe's idle PC is not what Mary's idle PC is going to be on their machine. So we use the drop-down list. Check this out. We have two options here. And we can pick either one of those with the asterisk and grab it. And I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. 
and the CPU usage should come down again. So we can find a sweet spot for it. Now, if we have all exactly the same model router and we have a single hypervisor running, we should be able to start all of these and it shouldn't go right through the roof. So now that one is working, we can go ahead and bring up the rest. So there should be a little load as all the iOS's come into play and they're all the routers are booted up, but it shouldn't be 100% by any means. Also, while they're coming up, let me give you another tip on troubleshooting. Let's say you have idle PC that is set, yet you bring new routers in, and for whatever reason, it goes higher and higher and higher. I'm going to freeze the screen just for a moment. Here's what we could do. Bring this machine up, run idle PC, find a good one for that. Bring the second one up, and then while this one's running, while they're both running, run idle PC here. So if you want five machines running, now in a, in a perfect world, we could do idle PC once here, and everything would be great with the same exact model of router. However, if you find situations where it's starting to go up to 100% again, find, the heart, find out where it really takes a bad turn. So it could be you bring R1 up, bring R2 up, bring R3 up, bring R4 up, and there's no problem. Then you bring R5 up, and all of a sudden it goes to 100% again. Leave all of them on and start there and do the idle PC on R5. And again, find another sweet spot with all of them running. In the background, there could be multiple hypervisors running, and it's possible to have different idle PCs on different groups of routers, especially if you're using two different models on the same topology. I'm going to unfreeze my screen here, and you'll notice it's not really dropping down. I'm still way the heck up there. What's going on? Well, on these other routers, there must be some waiting for me for a prompt to press enter. I'm going to tell it that I want a console to all the devices. So it's going to bring up all the consoles real quick. I'm going to make sure they all get an enter. So there's nobody waiting on me, and that indeed was the case. And the secret is don't leave these routers waiting for a prompt in from the user, and that was bringing the CPU really high. So now we've got five routers. They're all running. They're all active. And my CPU utilization is under 10%. So in this environment, I've got a pretty hefty machine. That being the case, I could probably put 30 routers on this topology and have them all working and still be in fine shape. So my friends, in this micro nugget, we've taken a look specifically at how to reduce the overhead of GNS3 by simply modifying or tweaking the idle PC value. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.